Hey folks, welcome to another episode of ASP.NET Core from Zero to Overkill. This will be the first episode outside of the overview regarding our event-driven integration, as we'll go for a quick intro to the transactional outbox pattern. I was going to start coding part in this episode, but I felt like we needed a bit of an, an intro about the thing we're implementing and why are we implementing that. So. This will still not be um, a lot of code. So in this episode, we'll see the most obvious event publishing approach that probably as we think about integrating uh, using events, we would expect. Uh, then we'll take a look at the, the transactional outbox pattern. And finally, we'll see how we'll implement this pattern in the next uh, three episodes, I guess. As the usual plugs, if the videos are being useful, please consider dropping a like, sharing and leaving feedback, all important. Uh, and for more stuff, remember that all the, the videos have an accompanying blog post. And for more information, uh, talk to me on Twitter. Uh, check out on Twitch, I try to stream at Fridays, not always, but at Fridays around 6 uh, West, uh, West European summer time at least now that we are on the on that on daylight savings and if you can't catch that uh, the the all the streams are then stored in youtube for more contacts visit the blog or the or my personal website with this out of the way let's get going now as we will start to integrate through events i assume although not everyone, but the most obvious thing that comes to mind for, for us is to just have a way to publish events and when we think we should publish them, call that code. So uh, as I described in the past episode, our use case is in the auth service, when we register a user, we want to notify the other services uh, that a new user was created. So. I would expect that the the most obvious approach would be we do the register the registration and after we see that the registration was successful we publish an event to the event bus so looking at the code i would say we have here register.cshtml and over here on post is where we receive the information for the user we have this here we create ignore this code this should be deleted in here we create a new user and if it succeeds we do a bunch of things so probably what we would expect was something like so we got here so we could use something like event bus and uh publish new user registered event something like, like this this is the most obvious approach and would work for most of the cases I'd say but most of the cases I, I'd also say that it's not good enough and why is this a problem so Let's get back to the slides where I put a simple diagram. So let's imagine this situation. So we submit a registration from the browser. It was the, that code that we looked at. Uh, we'll, we store that information. Again, that code that we looked at. The, let me go here. So this is that part. Create the user. So we store things. But imagine that over somewhere here in one or in two. So imagine like in one, the server goes down or maybe in two, the um, event bus is offline for a minute or maybe the network has an error. So we fail to publish the event in this in the, somewhere around this. So what would happen basically as there is no event but there is no recollection of we wanted to 
to publish that event, the information about the user is already done. So this event will never be published. We have a new user, but the other services will never be notified because we have no way to know if, if we notified or not, because what we have in the database says that the user is registered and nothing else. So this is a problem if we go with this, I'd say, more, more obvious approach and simple one. So if we want things to be reliable, we need to do something more than this. This is not good enough. So enter the transactional outbox pattern. So the gist of this pattern is to persist the domain specific changes. So in this case, persist that the user was registered as well as the intention to publish the event in the same transaction uh, with the goal of ensuring at least once delivery. So not only will we store in the database the, um, that the, the user was registered, but we will also store in the database in, to make it a transaction that we want to publish an event with, with that information. So let's take a look a bit at what this would mean in terms of implementation. So this is an implementation based on uh, a, tr a relational database. That's what we are using. We're using Postgres. This might be a bit different in other kinds of databases, namely the document databases because of the transactional guarantees. But let's go with the example that we have. So imagine that we have, we have the auth service. There is this user manager, which is that class from ASP.NET Core Identity where we create a user. And this is what already exists. So this part is what exists of already, ignore this part. So what we want is, besides this, also published to something that we'll call a, an outbox, an outbox table, call it what you will, where we store information about messages, events, whatever, that we want to send. But, like we saw, because we want to send them reliably, we want to make sure that if we create a new user, we insert a new a new event in the outbox. Or if we update a user, we insert a new event. If we delete a user, we insert a new event. But this needs to be done in the same transaction. So, for this, because there is no transaction between the database and the event was, we cannot do it in the simple way that we talked about initially. In the old times where it was more common to use SQL Server and uh, MSMQ, this could be done because they supported distributed transactions between them. But right now, if we are using something like a RabbitMQ, Kafka, and, uh, and all those other clouds like uh, Azure's Azure Event Buzz and stuff like that. If we are using that, then we don't have uh, transaction, uh, transactional guarantees between the buzz and the, the database. So the way to do it is put it all in the database and ensure that. In this case, because it's a relational database, we can do it in a couple of tables. If it was a, a document database like MongoDB, we probably needed to put the, um, the event in the same document because if I recall correctly, in those kinds of databases, we the transactional guarantees are at the level of the, the document, but because we are in a relational database, we can take advantage of a transaction and do it in the same. So that's what we are going to do. Then, by doing this, we make sure that everything is persisted at the same time. Then we need some other entity, in this case, I called it the outbox publisher, that reads the events from the outbox and sends them to the event bus. And after sending the, to the event bus, then they can be deleted or soft deleted or implement how you will. But the thing is, mark them in some way so they are not sent again because there's no need. And this is it. Uh, it seems it is rather simple, at least uh, the concept. Implementing it is a bit more 
more work but the the gist of it i think it's more or less easy to understand um, one thing to notice is because like we said there is no transactional guarantees between publishing things and uh, messing with the, the, the database what can happen is after publishing to the event bus and b before deleting the published events it could go down so we would eventually send the same event twice or more times depending on the problems we have uh, and that's why over here I said at least once delivery not exactly once so at least once it will deliver because it's in the database and we will try to publish them in, in, while it fails but as soon as it succeeds we can then remove from the table so most of the times probably we'll have exactly once delivery but we have to be prepared for at least once but that's not really part of the transactional outbox pattern it's just a, a drawback um, so I skipped ahead of myself so drawbacks I can find with the, the this pattern is the extra complexity because before we just needed to add two or three lines of code to publish an event uh, with this we need a bunch more lines of code to make sure that we deliver the event reliably but I guess it's worth it so and like I was saying the at least once instead of not exactly once so the subscribers need to be prepared to receive repeated events but this is a topic for a later stage of this event driven integration journey and we'll start with uh, implementing the outbox pattern so the next steps I will not start in this episode to try to keep the episode smaller than I, I used to normally I do giant episodes so I'm trying to focus the episodes a bit more and try to have smaller posts more more focused on specific topics instead of shoving everything in the same place so this will be it and in the next episodes what we'll do is uh, figure out how and when to create the events because now we know that we can just publish them like that so we need to figure out when to create those events and um, and know them because as this code is not completely controlled by us because we are using uh, ASP.NET built-in stuff so we need to do some things to make this work a as we want so this will be the next episode after that We'll just store the events in the outbox and finally publish the events that are stored in the outbox. So this will be the, the first steps in our event driven integration journey from the point of view of the publisher. But even before publishing, there is a bit of work to do. So hope this is interesting and you'll join me in the next episodes. For this one, that's about it. Just wanted to really introduce this pattern and if you look online there's a lot more information about it i just wanted to pass in the to share the gist of it but for more details ask questions or <laughs> there is a lot of um, more information so i hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one see you